Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. My name is Sophie. I'm here with Crimson Canvas Arts to bring you a brand new lesson. Today we are going to be making a very cute little cartoon penguin floating on an iceberg. So this is what our final project is going to look like. For this project we need a small piece of drawing paper. Um, we're also going to need a pencil and an eraser and we'll need a sharpie or a permanent marker and then we'll need something to color with. This project could really be done with anything. You could do it with colored pencils like what I'm going to use, markers, even watercolors. So pick your favorite medium and we'll get started. So let's talk a little bit about penguins before we get started on our project. So penguins are flightless and aquatic birds, which means that they cannot fly and they swim in the water. They spend about 50% of their time in the water and 50% of their time on land. They are very good swimmers and they have flippers to help them swim and they eat mostly fish and other sea creatures. They live in the southern hemisphere mostly in the South Pole. So we are in the Northern Hemisphere, which means they live on the other side of the world. There are lots of different types of penguins in the world, approximately 17 to 20 different types. Some are really big and some are really small, um, and they're almost all very cute. So we're gonna draw a very cute little penguin for our picture today. All right. For our first step, we're going to draw a horizon line. So just right in the middle of my paper, I'm going to draw a straight line going across to the other side. Then I'm gonna draw the head of my penguin. To do that, I'm just gonna draw a circle right above that horizon line. We don't want this head to take up too much space you can make it take up about half of the top half there. Then down below, I'm gonna draw another circle. I'm gonna make this one bigger. This one is gonna be for the penguin's body. It's kind of up to you how big you wanna make this circle. I wanna make my penguin look really nice and round to make it extra cute, so I'm gonna draw my circle pretty big down there. Up next, I'm going to draw um, a little U shape on the body. This is going to be for the white chest of my penguin. And you can go ahead and erase the line of your horizon line that's going through the middle. Then I'm going to draw two wings, one on each side of the body. Then I'm gonna draw the little detail on the top of the penguin's head that goes above the eyes, which is basically just a little M shape like this. And when we color it in, we're gonna color in this area up top black. Same thing with the body work. We'll color the outside here black as well. Now it's time to draw the penguin's face. So for that, I'm gonna start with the eyes. I'm gonna draw two ovals, one on each side gonna make these pretty big to make it have cute cartoony kind of eyes and then I'll draw another oval inside for the people and then I'll finish the face by just drawing a little triangle for the penguins nose to finish the penguin I'm gonna just draw two feet for the feet I'm gonna make kind of little W shapes to put three toes on each foot now I need to draw the iceberg that goes underneath the penguin. So I'm gonna draw just a kind of blob shape. It doesn't exactly matter what your iceberg looks like because icebergs can look like anything. Now I'm gonna turn this shape into 3D. So on the edges of my shape, I'm just gonna draw a short vertical line going down. And then I'm going to make a line just like the one that's above it to complete this shape. So I'll make one there. You can see this line is like the one above. I'll make another one down here. You can see this line is also like the one above it. And then one more over here. So now it looks like a 3D iceberg. 
I'm gonna add just a couple little vertical lines going along the edge here to give it a little texture. And then I'll draw a couple ripples going around the outside of this shape here to really make it look like it's floating. And to make the rest of this look like water, I'll add in a couple waves to keep that also some movement, some texture in the background. Next up, let's do what's behind the penguin. So I'm going to draw another kind of just wiggly line going behind the penguin, and this is going to make it look like there's some mountains or hills or maybe more icebergs behind the penguin. And then the last thing I will do is I'm going to draw a little sun peeking out from behind these hills. Just like that. So we can think that this picture is maybe a sunset or a sunrise with that sun peeking out. Once everything is drawn with the pencil, I'm going to go in with my permanent black marker. I'm going to trace over everything and I'm going to color in the body of my penguin. Now that I'm done tracing and filling in my picture with the Sharpie, I'm going to go ahead and color in my picture. As I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson, you could really use lots of different supplies to color this in. For mine, I'm going to use colored pencil. I'm going to color in the beak and the feet orange, then I'll color in my water blue, and then since I have my sun peeking above the hills back here, I'm going to draw a sunset in the background of my picture. So you can see so far I've colored in the beak and the feet and the water. Coloring in the beak and the feet is pretty straightforward and I just colored those in like normal but for the water since this is such a big area I colored it a little bit differently. Normally, when you color with a colored pencil, you hold it just like a normal pencil with your grip a little bit tighter and farther up on your pencil. But to make this go faster, I relax my grip a little bit and I'm holding my pencil farther back. I'm actually going to turn my hand over like this. And I'm going to use my wrist to propel the pencil going side to side. This makes it a lot easier to color faster. If I hold it closer up, then I have to move my hand like this to color in, and I can't reach quite as big of an area. So that's why I relax my grip and hold it out here. It makes things go a lot faster. I'm going to do the same thing when I color in my sunset background back here. And I'm gonna practice a little bit of blending in my background as well, so I'm going to overlap my color. So you can see that by changing the grip on my pencil, I was able to color a lot faster, cover a lot more ground quickly. And by overlapping my colors, by putting a little bit of the orange on the yellow and a little bit of the red over the orange, I was able to create a really subtle transition from one color to the next. So now that I have everything all colored in, I am all done with this project. Thank you so much everyone for watching our video today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you did and you like how your project turned out, please post a photo on social media and tag us at Crimson Canvas Arts. We love seeing what you guys create. Thank you everyone for watching and hope to see you next time.